here is today's completion of the ASEAN News, and here they are. The Indonesian ambassador informed Ramazor to the Timorese president about Indonesia's preparation for the ASEAN high-level summit. At the early May of 2023, Okto Manik, the Indonesian ambassador to Timor-Leste, informed the Timorese president about Indonesia's preparation for the ASEAN high-level summit, which will be held in Labuan Bajo of Indonesia on May 9 until 11, 2023, as currently Indonesia holds the ASEAN presidency. We have discussed with the president concerning the plans of the ASEAN summit in Labuan Bajo. We also informed the preparation progress in Jakarta as well. Dorinus Manik added that the Timorese delegation, which will attend the summit, will lead by the Timorese president, Tormatan Ruak, and will be accompanied by the Timorese Foreign Affairs Minister. In addition, the Timorese president will underpin the outcome from this high-level summit, mainly relates to the timor leste succession into the ASEAN. Shannon Guzmong and Cambodian Prime Minister attended the SEA Games opening ceremony. The Prime Minister of Cambodia, Hun Sen, invited Timor's prominent public figure, Kairala Shanana Guzmaun, to attend the opening ceremony of the Sea Games. Guzmaun also congratulated the Cambodian Prime Minister for the well organized of the Sea Games, and Guzmaun appreciated the leadership of Hun Sen, for he has led Cambodia to a remarkable transformation, especially in the infrastructure and economic issues. Guzman and Hun Sen discusses the relationship between the two countries, mostly in regards of Timor Leste's position to become the ASEAN member. The 32nd 2023 Sea Games were taken part by Timor Leste as well by sending its athletes to compete in the games. Economic growth in ASEAN has remained reduced as an important component of global economic growth. Indonesian Finance Minister Sri Mulyani Indrawati said economic growth in the ASEAN region remains robust continues to be an important component for global economic growth. She expressed this in her opening speech with the chairperson of the ASEAN Plus 3 meeting of finance ministers and central bank governors. We have been fortunate that growth in our region, especially for ASEAN, has remained robust and continues to be an important component of global economic growth. But we must remain vigilant to their flow on effects, particularly inflationary pressures, energy and food insecurity, and geopolitical fragmentation. Meanwhile, Japanese finance minister said they're meeting to review regional economic and financial development. This meeting will serve as a precious opportunity to review our economic and financial developments and to discuss our regional financial cooperation. To this end, your active and constructive participation would be highly appreciated. The ASEAN Plus 3 group comprises the 10 members of ASEAN and Japan, China and South Korea. Indonesia says engaging Myanmar stakeholders to end violence. Indonesia's foreign minister confirmed her country had engaged with key stakeholders in Myanmar's conflict as well as neighbors India, Thailand and China in an effort to kick start a peace process as violence intensifies. Fokus kita saat ini adalah our focus now is, first of all, to conduct as many engagements as possible with stakeholders in Myanmar conflict. Engagement with all parties, if you remember, is the mandate of the five PCs. And during these four months, we have conducted more than 60 engagements. The Indonesian move is the first major effort to bring to the table all the key players in the Myanmar's conflicts and push for the implementation of a peace consensus that its top general agreed with the Southeast Asian bloc two years ago. Myanmar has been wracked by violence and economic turmoil since the military seized power in the coup in 2021. Indian and Ukrainian crew members still missing in tanker fire off Malaysian coast.
The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, said one Ukrainian and two Indian nationals were the missing crew members of a tanker that caught fire off the southern coast. The agency added the tanker was on its way from China to Singapore with 28 crew members on board and 23 were rescued by the MMEA and by nearby vessels while three were still missing. The MMEA said it commenced search and rescue operations after receiving an alert at 1600 hour local time about the tanker on fire. The maritime agency said the cause of the incident was under investigation. Philippine president says United States and Philippines return to normal road relations. Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said relations between Washington and Manila were back on normal road of partnership. This visit, the first by a sitting Philippine president to the United States in over 10 years. I do not know quite how that developed that way, as uh, that has not been the case in the past. But we are back on our normal road of partnership uh, being working together hand in hand. That at the very least, this visit has been a most uh, constructive and uh, meaningful one. Uh, it, I was just uh, speaking uh, uh, inside before we came out and we were talking about the trip and uh, uh, I said generally there is a tendency sometimes when uh, to, to we have these official visits or state visits where uh, you make these declarations and pronouncements which are very general and uh, what we refer to as motherhood statements. Uh, we have this in this trip that has not been the case at all. Marcos Jr. affirmed that his government and China were slowly inching towards a solution in an energy exploration dispute in the South China Sea. According to Marcos, Manila was still working on establishing a crisis hotline with Beijing amid maritime tensions between the two countries, and he hopes it will be in place soon. The United States and the Philippines have agreed on new guideline for their 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty following multiple requests by Manila to make clear the condition under which Washington will come to its defense. It also mentions the need to work together considering asymmetric, hybrid, irregular warfare and gray zone tactics. Meanwhile, China maintains its Coast Guard operates lawfully in its waters. China says China's economic to contribute more to the world. China Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning at a press briefing in Beijing said the spring-like vibrancy and vigor of China's economy will make a still greater contribution to the world economy. This May Day holiday displayed China's exceptional hustle and bustle and economic vigor and is a worthy golden week. According to statistics, a total of 274 million domestic tourist trips were made during the May Day holiday, with a tourism revenue of 148 billion yuan, up 70.83% and 128.9%, respectively, year on year. Chinese citizens' outbound travel orders increased by nearly seven times year on year. Mao made the remarks when asked to comment on the exceptional booming tourism during the five-day May Day holiday that just ended. South Korea protests against Japanese Prime Minister plan visit to the country. South Korea's opposition parties and representatives of citizens' groups gathered in front of the National Assembly protesting against Japanese Prime Minister planned visit to the country. Analysts believe that the urgent visit is to make preparations for the trilateral meeting of the leaders from three countries including South Korea, the United States and Japan, and the launch of trilateral military cooperation. Hundreds of South Korean protesters, including those from opposition parties such as the Democratic Party, Justice Party and Progressive Party, rallied to call on the government not to participate in the U.S.-Japan-South Korea military alliance and condemn the Japanese government for distorting the history of aggression. They chanted slogans and held signs reading, condemn Japan for distorting history, opposed the military alliance between the South Korea, the United States and Japan, apologize and compensate victims of forced labor and comfort women, opposed the discharge of nuclear contaminated water into the sea. Some protesters believe that Fumio Kishida's abrupt decision to visit South Korea was influenced by the United States. Japan seeks to strengthen economic relations with Peru.
Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi met Peruvian President Dina Boluarte in Lima to leaders discuss bilateral issues to consolidate trade ties. Hayashi and Boluarte met at the Presidential Palace in Lima to mark the 150th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between the two countries. Hayashi expressed Japan's expectations of Peru's role as an important economic partner to strengthen global supply chains. According to the Peruvian Foreign Ministry, trade between the two countries reached US$4.2 billion by 2022, making the ASEAN country Peru's fourth largest trading partner. Hayashi also said Japan and Peru agreed to work closely to respond to current international situations, including the war between Russia and Ukraine. Thank you very much, folks. Enjoy your week as ahead. Stay safe, stay healthy. We will see you soon.